I really advocate, you know, the younger generation do like try to, if there's something you're interested in, uh, see what, what opportunities are there. Like there's usually apprenticeships, there's internships, there's all mm-hmm. sorts of things there so you can get into the space. Um, and then a lot of kids now, I mean, they're gaming, like esports is now a thing, right? You know, and yeah, 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 social yeah. media on a regular basis, like how are you leveraging that into a career um, yeah. path that can really be helpful? So taking some of the things that, you know, you already enjoy and seeing what, you know, application can be done in a professional setting is, I think, the first step. What up, everybody? It's your boy JK today. It's Thursday, so you already know what it is. It's Taco Thursday with JK live on IG, and I'm recording for my YouTube channel, which you can go and subscribe to after this episode, which is Jeremy Kellum. Go ahead and subscribe to that after the episode. And I'm recording for my podcast on all podcasts and platforms, Attack of Thursday with JK Podcast, which you can catch on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And so today, today, I got another special guest joining me. My guest for today hails from the great state of Florida. For a lot of them to be exact, got to throw the L's up when I say that. For a lot of them to be exact. If you are from Deerfield Beach High School, went there at any time, then you know that he was number 22 in your programs. For the Deerfield Beach High School, one and only football team, the first team to ever go to state in school history, only team to go to state in school history, number 22. But if you know him as I do, then you know him as one of my best men in my wedding. One of my brothers. We held down one of the sides of the field at Deal Field. We used to celebrate. Even when we didn't make a play, we used to have our hands shake. The play used to be uh, all on the other side of the field, but we used to celebrate because Coach Martin told us, hey, coaches come and watch people who make plays have fun to celebrate. And so, man, this is my dog doing amazing. We're going to get into that, man. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all help me welcome my dog, my brother, a great man, great father, great husband, Daniel Parker, a.k.a. Park. All right, you in up, dog. All right, what's up, what's up, what's up, everyone? What's up with you, dog? How you been, man? Man, hey, you know, it's doing good, man. Right now, it's been a long week. You know, I got to get a cut right now, so I'm struggling yeah. a little bit. You know, getting ready to uh, celebrate my wifey's birthday tomorrow. So, you know, okay. early uh, happy birthday. Well, uh, we, and got, then, we definitely got to do the birthday shout out. Happy birthday, Sarah. Hey, live it up. Enjoy it. That's what's up, though, bro. Okay, then. So, you definitely got to get a cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine, I'm mine looks straight, though. I know. I know. Shoot, to, my to you, you looking crazy to, here. That's what I'm about to say. To you, you know what I'm saying? You know how we is. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, I, we, But to me, I think you needed a cut, bro. But I feel you, though, bro. Okay. I appreciate so you, it, bro. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, no problem. So, you celebrating wifey birthday tomorrow. Yeah. All right, man. How, how, how the son doing, man? How, how you doing? Hey, I mean, two years old, man. You know, it goes fast. I mean, remember when you first had your, uh, you first had your little one, and uh, talking to you about it, and saying like, man, like I can't wait. You know, hey, can't wait to have a kid and we have a boy. Hey, our boys got to link up and play together and do all this stuff. So, uh, you know, we were talking up the day, and and uh, definitely gonna be happy to for us to link up finally. Uh, you know, at some point during the holiday soon, man. But uh, he's doing great, man. Like, you know, talking, moving around, doing all sorts of stuff. And it, hey, every day is a new adventure, right? You know, so you learn something new every day. And, and he's uh, he's growing, man. He's growing. Looking forward nah, to seeing what he become. Nah, definitely, man. Um, you know, like you said, man, I just remember our uh, conversations um, that we used to talk when, you know, obviously when I stepped into fatherhood and you was like, man, how is it? And, and then, you know, you, uh, you and Sarah and found out, oh, y'all about to have a baby and you stepping into it, man. And like you say, man, two years, um, have flown by, man. And, and, and so, man, I'm happy for y'all and congrats on all. And then, just like we was texting today, find yeah. out we both going to be in Florida at the same time. Hey. hey, for the, uh, for the, uh, Christmas break, man. So, so our families. Could all see each other play around, man, and then, uh, man, just really, really enjoy each other, man. Many people that's on here that would see us would know you, bro, because you know we've been rocking, we've got some of the same, some of the same following, but many, much yeah. of the following we don't, man, because we done went around to different places in the world, man. I mean, you travel the world, really, really. You've been <laughs> telling me I need to travel the world, so I'm trying to get uh, get like you, man. But but let the people, man, introduce yourself, tell the people who you are, where you're from, what you do, man. Yeah, man. So, you know, Daniel Parker, hell from uh, Lauderdale, as you said in the intro, man. Hey, yeah. Yeah, Lauderdale all day, up. man. Hey, yeah. really, really, you know, the pride of Lauderdale, I really appreciate, you know, and grateful for 
growing up down there and experiences we had there. And, uh, but yeah, you know, currently reside in New York, uh, you know, never thought I'd be living in New York and I'll get into that a little bit later, but, uh, in New York right now and, uh, been here for shoot, uh, since 2008, you know? And so that's a pretty long time and never expected to be here that long. Um, but from Lauderdale, you know, I, uh, in, in a career of video production, media production, uh, had a very, you know, uh, interesting career, how I got to the point where I am right now. But uh, right now I'm working for Coinbase um, in the broadcast division, so helping produce content there. Uh, I've been all over, as you said, you know, traveling, you know, whether it's for sports, whether it's for, you know, personal, uh, professionally. And so I have an opportunity to really see different parts of the world and really expand, you know, on uh, what I know as the world's the world to be has been, you know, crazy, you know, and so uh, definitely grateful to be here with you and, uh, you know, share some experiences with the followers. No, nah, definitely, man. And uh, one thing, like you said, man, when you said you have, you've been in New York forever, man. And uh, since 08, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, you yeah. said, man, it's, it's crazy because, um, and I tell this story to my, to my scholars I teach, man, in high school, I'm like, Hey, you know, Facebook used to be EDU. Right, you, you couldn't get yeah. Facebook yeah. until you was in college, but I found that out because of you. So yeah. you was like that 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 big bro, that mentor, that that person, that trade, that you know, that trailblazer for me to mm -hmm. um, see what college was like without being there. You like, hey, bro, hey, they got this new social media, and they got uh, you know, Facebook, you, but you got to be in college. Then you telling me how college football is and and the funny stories, and I'm following your game. Hey, bro, you got to pick. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it, you know, our our relationship man go way back since high school. But um, I you know definitely have followed um, you in a sense of you kind of you paved the way. You know what I'm saying? With you went you went places and then shared that information um, with me. And, and so when I thought about you know man, gotta have Park on the show, um, man. Every week, whether I'm on here by myself, I have guests. Man, we we tackle. Uh, different topics, right? And, and the Tackle Thursday with JK Podcast is a self help podcast for young adults who are working, established, and solidify a foundation in areas of their life, such as their career, relationship, status, marriage, and a role as a parent, right? Um, during life transitions. And when, when I think about you, man, because my titles, they, they coincide or correlate with guests. And, and so I know what you do for a living. And so the, tackle, the topic we're tackling today, man, is, is behind the scenes, right? Behind the scenes. And so when you hear the word behind the scenes, whether it's with your job, whether it's, um, you know, working behind the scenes, supporting uh, Sarah, watching her thrive in her career. Um, when you hear the term or the phrase behind the scenes, what comes to mind, man? Uh, I think of the, of the uh, conductor in the orchestra, you know, so someone that's behind the scenes that's actually making sure things work and flow. You don't necessarily need to be the person on the front line to, you know, have an impact in. And I think we, when you look at impact and how we can, you know, make an impact and, and versus, you know, individuals as well as, you know, uh, the masses, um, you know, it, it goes a little bit deeper, you know, because if you want to be in front of the camera, if you want to be the person that's on the front line, um, you know, there, there comes a lot of responsibility there as well, you know, and, and there's responsibility behind the scenes as well. And one of the things I always uh, think about is my grandmother uh and like how supportive she was of my grandfather right you know and, and you don't realize like the mothers always held down the homes right you know and, and they were really make, making it the, the uh calling the shots and i was yeah. raised by my mom you know and uh you know my parents divorced when i was young and you know being raised by my mom and, and you know some of the things that she really instilled in me you know in terms of uh you know really taking pride in what you do uh you know hard work you know and and, and I take those lessons with me and everything I do, you know, and realizing that, you know, you don't necessarily need to be the person in front of the scenes. Like, she managed and, and worked with one of the, the biggest motivational speakers in the world, Les Brown. Uh, and I've known Les since, you know, I was eight, nine years old, you know. And so, yeah. you know, being with him and seeing him and seeing the way he works and, and learning work ethic, you know, seeing my mom the way she works and learning work ethic, uh, I realized that, you know, it's not necessarily about what everyone sees, you know, on the front lines. It's about, you know, what people are doing behind the scenes in, in mm -hmm. general. Yeah, man, I did not know that, bro. I did not Definitely. know. One, I didn't even, I didn't know Les Brown until I see probably like four, four years ago. Um, yeah. Twan, um, you know, my, my boy as well that was in the wedding. He, uh, I, I believe he, he sent me something. He put me up on Les Brown, and and I started following him, and then I learned the story. And so the fact that you know, and I met your mom, and, and amazing woman, man, and. Uh, the fact that I, she did that, bro, like, like that's powerful, bro, and and it, and it goes to that message where when you talk about 
um, just you don't have to be in the forefront. So we know Les Brown, but mm-hmm. but your mom is that that orchestra or the person behind the scenes, making sure everything together, making mm-hmm. sure the person uh, in front of the camera is is able to uh, be the most successful that they can be. Uh, and, and so, man, when when I um, and we're gonna get more into to that whole behind the scenes as we yeah. go, man. But uh, but but definitely, I definitely like to kick off that question or whatever we talking tackling and allow my guests to answer that, man. So, man, you um, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, right? Yeah. Just like yeah. just like I am, man. And yeah. so, how was I was growing up, man? Being a kid from 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 the Korea, from South Florida, man. How was that? Was that? I mean, hey, you know, we, we, we grew up in an area where it sped up music, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and down there, man, like the way of life down in Florida is turned, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we kind of grew up a lot, you know, you know, uh, sooner and, and faster, I think, just based off of our environment, you know, like mm-hmm. the days of, uh, and also, you know, you know, you know, being a UN fan on your side and stuff like that, uh, you know, seeing the football down there and the culture down there with football, you know, is excellence, right? You know, football is like God, like how they, how it is in, in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, to see the way that it was there and like the sports that we have access to, you know, the weather, uh, you know, where, you know, we have hurricane season as, you know, they experienced recently. Um, where, you know, and, and I mean, that, that affected my senior year, you know, the year we actually went to state, we had a yeah, big hurricane, yeah. two hurricanes that year. Um, so going through those seasons and those cycles where, you know, you're around, you know, the environmental things that you're dealing with, you know, the culture that's down there, um, the weather, but then, you know, you also get a chance to meet a diverse group of people, you know, from all over. You have people from the Caribbean islands where you learn some of the cultures that's a little bit more laid, laid back. Which everyone thinks like Florida in the north, they think Florida's like very slow, but the cat the people in the Caribbean island, islands are more laid back and casual. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of the culture that's really influenced South Florida. And you know, being from down there and, and now being in the northeast, you know, you see the stark differences, right? Where mm-hmm. uh, you know, coming from there where everyone's like, Oh, we'll get to it when we get to it, versus up here, everything's immediate, you know? And, yeah, and so yeah, yeah. having that difference of, of, of being, you know, there where my personality is both of, of it's a mixture of both. Uh, where there are things that are not as urgent, right? But then I understand the urgency of, of getting things done. Um, it has been the perfect balance for me now. But, I mean, I love, I, and I'm, you know, being from down there, man, like every time I get a chance to tell somebody, they be like, oh, where are you from, Miami? I'm like, no, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Florida, yeah, yeah. from Korea, you know, and like anytime you yeah. see someone, you know, and we, we talk about this all the time. We knew this growing up. You see someone that's like playing professionally or doing whatever their thing, whether – even the music, you know, yeah. our team, our former team at Ace Hood, you know, being out yeah, there yeah. and like, uh, you see people doing their thing and you're like, yeah, you know, they're from the crib and everyone's like, oh, you don't know, I'm like, everybody in South Florida know everybody, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, for sure. It's six degrees of separation. Everybody know everybody. So uh, you go down there, but oh, I know such and such art, but you're from D-side? Cool, I know you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, sure, you know, no. being down there and, um, you know, growing up down there, I think was the greatest joy. Nah, it's, it's Florida is a unique place, man, one of a kind. And like you said, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I don't consider Florida like the true South, right? Like where I nah. live at right now, right? Ain't no Southern hospitality down there. People ain't hunking at you. Uh, <laughs> they not giving you the light hunk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, light, the, light, the light just turned green. They had smashing that junk. You know what I'm saying? They ain't waving at you. They not asking you how you doing in the snow. So, yeah. but... I love it, man. Like you say, the music. You can watch anybody while we watch football. I can, I know who's from Florida just yeah. by their touchdown Easy. celebration. Easy. Yeah. Hey, Easy. Know, but hey, buddy from the crib, bro. Ain't yeah. nobody dancing yeah. like that. If they're from the crib, man. Press and, conferences, um, you hear someone talk, you're like, they from the crib. Hey, <laughs> hey from the crib Easy. for real. Hey, for real, bro. Hey, so uh it's it's, it's crazy, man. But but so growing up Florida, right? So you talk about that, man. And um so you play sports. I know you play yeah. sports, football, baseball. Um, you play basketball too. I played sure basketball play. through play middle school. Yeah. Um, okay. and it was so funny playing basketball, uh, playing like rec leagues, and I yeah. played against some of the dudes from Deerfield in the yeah. in the rec leagues, on the summer leagues. And I remember seeing these dudes my walk on campus freshman year. I was like, I know this dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's one of those things like you know we're from Lauderdale and going to Deerfield was like twenty minutes away, right? So yeah. I'm gonna easily went to one of the local schools like Dillard, BA, you know Piper. Mm-hmm. Uh, but end up going out to Deerfield, and you know, even when I tell people that now, they're like, "From Deerfield?" I'm like, "Not from Deerfield, but I just happened yeah. to go there." You know, they had a magnet yeah. program, uh, the football team. You know, and I, I knew about Coach Redman and, and Coach Menace and them when they went up there because yeah. uh, they loved Diller. Um, and you know, going up there, I had the opportunity to play there and, and, and mm-hmm. you know, be in that environment. But uh, definitely football, baseball, ran track, 
I remember yeah. Coach Marty Marcus Cotton Nichols running the 800. He was like, did anybody run no 800? Hey, uh, you know. I forgot about who was on that track, huh? Hey, that woo. Hey, you heard that woo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, that yeah. Hey, yeah. That ran, somebody just ran out. Hey, hey. Yeah. you might over. as well just pack it up, man. Hey, it's over. Pack it up. Pack it up, dog. Hey, and, nah, uh, man. So, yeah. Nah, nah, that's what's up, man. So what, what, why would you think you chose football, man? Because you played baseball and, and, you know, the type of conversation I was looking at, uh, the Pivot Podcast, yeah. and they had uh, Ken Griffey on there. And yeah. and um, and I echo the same thing. Ken Griffey had to do a paper in college. And he was saying mm-hmm. money. Why they were trying to uh, why blacks right African Americans mm-hmm. not playing the game and it's, and it's yeah. money. Um, you know, uh, it's more expensive, right? Mm-hmm. You got to get equipment, travel, uh, and then you don't see. You're not seeing a lot of blacks playing, right? Yeah. So you're not seeing a lot of blacks playing. So so why do you think you chose football over over baseball, man, or, or other sports that you play to pursue it collegiately? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing was I was naturally better in baseball football because I played it longer, you know. And yeah, so yeah, over yeah. the years of like playing it, and uh, you know, uh, you know, we talk about being from the crib. You know, I played the lakes growing up, and then uh, you know, my last year playing little league, I played for Western Tigers, and uh, being down there and playing, you know, when it becomes part of your your life, like you know, everybody remember football season, you know, wearing your jersey, going to school, like oh, you play for such and such. And like that was always like a thing you see it like the jock shows that they put out there, but yeah, like, yeah. there was like a different way of being. It was more yeah. of like a pride of like where you were yeah. in your environment. For sure. Um, the football, you know, was I, I like the camaraderie, you know, and, and a lot of life lessons. But you know, again, my 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 mom, and my dad divorced, so I had my mom. So like the coaches and then like you know, you guys. I mean, I have siblings, but like having my brothers, you know, on a field that. And we could talk about things like me and you. I mean, we used to talk about life all the time, Man, you know, like no, whenever we had a, uh, they do an install over there. We'd be looking at each other. We'd just having a conversation about our relationships or about yep, whatever. Yep, yep, stuff, yep, you know, yeah, I remember you know. the combos. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think I think a lot of it also helped in, you know, from a spirituality standpoint, like, I mean, we used to pray all the time before games and like, you know, kind of seeing how that all tied into one um, was one of the things that really like draw, locked me into the sport. And then, you know, I was seeing the opportunities that had presented itself. You know, I was look, using football. I got to a point where I was like, all right, you know, coaches always tell us the numbers. And we got, we had, we were actually fortunate enough to be uh, coached by guys that played in the league. Um, but, you know, they tell you the numbers of like, all right, the X amount of players are, are going to make yeah. it to the pro or X amount of players are going to make a D1. And like, you know, even me going to college, I went to like a lower level Division One school to start off. Uh, and it's like, oh, man, you know, it ain't like the, the UMs or anything like that. But then I realized like, it's not about that, you know what I mean? Because yeah. if you're going to make it somewhere, you're going to make it no matter where you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, like, you know, going through those experiences and thinking about that. And I was like, man, like, I love the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things that you just love it. You, you appreciate it. You, you you love the hard work. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, like you said, you know, whenever we used to celebrate, even when we had nothing to do to play, you know, it was always like <laughs> a fun, fun time, man. Like, and yeah. Friday nights were, were, were it, man. And, and, you know, from Friday nights and then going to Saturday mornings, uh, you know, it was like a seamless transition, you know, and thinking yeah. about like, okay, this is something that has to be a part of my life um, for as long as I can do it, you know, because it's a kid's game at the end of the day, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and so really enjoying that part of it. No, nah, definitely, man. And, and so you, you brought up Deerfield, man. And, and um, one thing, I mean, we know the amazing career. We enjoy going there, man. And, and one yeah. thing I can say, um, we went there because of mainly because of the uh, communication broadcast arts, right? And yeah. we we still got that goal, right? We're going to work together, right? Gonna, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get there. You, hey, you produce a song, um, hey, following your lead in front of the camera. We're going to get there, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and last episode, man, I had Nick on, and, and me and Nick talked about just how powerful that communication broadcast and arts program is. That, yeah. that what we were doing in high school, we're actually doing right now, right? Yeah. And so, man, like, talk about how how your childhood and, and that experience in college prepared you for what you're doing now in media and production and, 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 and just being a content creator, man. Talk about that a little bit, man. Yeah. So, you know, in freshman year, you first get exposed to it. Right. And, and I think what, what drew, drew me into being a part of the media uh, and the communications, uh, you know, uh, magnet program at Deerfield was, I saw Stuart Scott, you know, I saw those guys behind yeah, the scenes, yeah. you know, in front of the camera. I was like, oh, I want to be that. I want to be Stuart Scott. I want to be this guy. Um, and, you know, when we got into those classes and you had the opportunity to really like try things out. So, you know, you were trying out radio, you know, it was like, oh, you know, it's, uh, it's your boy DP, you know, and it, you yeah. know, everybody, you know, that's how we, <laughs> yeah, we was on radio. There, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, radio station. Um, 
And then you had, uh, you know, digital media, learning how to uh, do video editing. Um, you learn, you know, your books of photos and, and doing that stuff and sort of building out a catalog. Uh, and there's all these different things that we're learning, all these different tools. And I remember at the time, it was like, man, like, if I could do this for the rest of my life where I'm not sitting behind a desk or like, you know, punching numbers or doing something yeah. that I won't have any fulfillment with, if I can do this for the rest of my life, man, this is it. And so I really like, uh, you know, double down on that. You know, I was like, hey, no matter what, I want to do media and communications. I want to do communications. I want to do media. And for a long time, I was like, oh, I, I want to be the guy in front of the camera. You know, I was trying to work on my, everyone always said, like, you know, you have a great voice. You know, you should be, you know, be an anchor, be a radio broadcaster. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and yeah. but I never looked at it that way. I was like, hey, you know, if I can get in front of the camera and, and, and make it work, I definitely want to do it. But, you know, being in school and, and like learning the foundational things, I was like, okay, this is something I know I can do for the rest of my life. And, and ultimately that led into, you know, my decision to major in college um and you know using the football and learning you know communications at Deerfield mm -hmm. really set me up for my life right you know where yeah i leveraged football to get me into college and then moved on from there no for sure man and so you talk about college man segue right into yeah. college uh so you went to start out at lasalle man and, and like you say st peter's first I, I i gotta give them a little bit of love uh, hey, go, ahead, go ahead go ahead go ahead give you love yeah 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 so i mean they, they did their thing and, and uh they did their thing in uh basketball uh last year or the year before that uh st peter's okay. now university um very small school in jersey city uh division one school fcs and you know uh so we talk about you know trials and triplets you know things that you learn along yeah. the way sure. and Went there, you know, freshman year. I remember, you know, I remember I hit you up. I was like, bro, this first college game I got in there, like, I was like lollygagging around a pal, dude, knocked me over. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First football. <laughs> hey, ain't you no know, joke, man. I'm right here at 160 <laughs> light, light and ass, you know. I was like, yeah, that, that learned the hard way, man. But yeah. It taught me a lot, you know, like that first experience taught me something. Um, and then from there, it was, okay, you know, I played there. They, they dropped the football program. And in that mm -hmm. conference, I remember that state within that conference, and I went to LaSalle. Uh, yeah. for my sophomore year and uh, being at LaSalle I mean that was like probably the funnest time I ever had you know like literally like it was I mean football but then like you know that school was just like fun party all this stuff and I and you know I really enjoyed my time there I had, got a lot, a lot of lifelong friends from there as well same thing lifelong friends from uh, St. Peter's but uh, I think LaSalle was one of those opportunities where I was like okay man this is what it's like you know to really have like a college experience because it was slightly bigger um, than where St. Peter's was and then ultimately, you know, dealt with a little bit of adversity there. You know, the football program dropped, and they're all in that same division. So yeah. uh, the only teams left out of that division that kept their programs was, like, Maris, uh, Duquesne, who played against Florida State, like, three weeks ago. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, I think it was only two, you know, and everybody else, like, sort of got rid of the football team because they were primarily basketball schools. Um, yeah. And so, you know, from there, I ended up, you know, going over the pace, you know, and, uh, you know, at that point, I, I had to make a decision, you know, like, do I really want to continue to pursue this football career? Um, and it may or may not pan out into something, you know, we know there are various levels of professional uh, football, or do I really want to focus on, you know, what I what I truly want to do in life long term, right? And so uh, I chose Pace because it was, you know, in New York, um, gave me an opportunity to really study communications and be close to, you know, the, the Mecca. Um, and, you know, from there on, it's just said, you know, what, let me just see where this thing goes. And uh, I love football and, and it's still like my, my number one thing. But, yeah. you know, I started focusing on life after football at that point. Now, I I always uh, like I never thought that just from our, us growing up in our conversations, I think that we always had a grip of that one day we were going to be done playing. Right. Yeah. And that we were going to segue into that career, right? And mm -hmm. and I know the transition wasn't easy, right? But, but and like I said, I target young adults, man. And young adults, like, we're in the midst of transition. Where you from high school to college, college mm -hmm. uh, to young adulthood, or you're an adult, you go from being single to dating to being married, you transition to being parents. Like, yeah. how were you able to make that, you know, I know it wasn't like a seemingly, you know, you know, with no hiccup transition, but how was you able to make that transition from, okay, I'm done playing, I'm going to focus on what I need to do and already have what, what you were going to transition to next? Like, how was that? What advice could you give to a young adult that are, that's in that midst, going from one thing they did for their whole life, now they got to go to their new beginning? 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough when you when you first think about it, right? You know, the professional world is scary, especially when you're young. You don't know how you're going to pay bills. I was just yeah. talking to my mother-in-law about this the other day, you know, thinking about when you're younger, you're like, oh, I see my parents doing these things. They're paying bills, you know, balancing checks, doing all these things. And then you think about one day that has to be me, you know? And so yeah. what does that look like? You know, am I going to be doing something I'm fulfilled with? Am I going to be working a job that is just like, man, this thing's kicking my behind. I don't really want to do this, right? And so I think one of the things that really helped me was that initial foundation that, you know, we received at Deerfield where it was, hey, you know, you can learn the arts, you can learn the craft, you can learn the technique and just build off of that. You know, you're going to mature in, in how you do things. And I remember at that point, it was just like, okay, when I got to uh, Pace and, you know, I started realizing, I mean, the, the, I mean, we started off good, you know, I first got there, but I was like, yeah. oh, this ain't going to be it long term, you know, and I'm like, the prospects of going pro at this point is like, pretty much obsolete and so thinking about that and, and, and really seeing okay what what would this next chapter be i was like well i'm in the right place um you know being in new york and yeah. now i have to start leveraging some of these relationships and i and to be honest i didn't know how i was going to get into that you know and, and the good thing about i think in, in your communications program as well where it was one of those things where you had to do an internship you know prior to graduate right and so having that ability to intern you know I interned really late my senior year. I should have interned yeah. before that, but, you know, playing sports, you don't have any time. Um, but having an opportunity to intern and really, like, take that into, you know, sort of the next chapter uh, was something that I really advocate, you know, the younger generation do. Like, try to, if there's something you're interested in, uh, see what, what opportunities are there. Like, there's usually apprenticeships, there's internships, there's all mm -hmm. sorts of things there so you can get into the space. Um, and then a lot of kids now, I mean, they're gaming, like esports is now a thing, right? You know, and yeah, 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 social yeah. media on a regular basis, like how are you leveraging that into a career um, yeah. path that can really be helpful? So taking some of the things that, you know, you already enjoy and seeing what, you know, application can be done in a professional setting is, I think, the first step. No, nah, definitely, man. And I, and I think you said something uh, so powerful in that is finding out what you like to do or what is it that you're already doing? And, and in yeah. nowadays, in 2020, something that you're doing, I'm pretty sure you can monetize, right? Oh, yeah. And, and, and oh, it yeah. might not. And, that, and the thing that I want, like, my, my, my younger adult audience to really realize is that um, it, it might not happen like this. Like, we, we grew up in a generation, bro, even though, like, we got, I think our generation is the best. I'm biased, yeah. but I, I'm say biased this, though, <laughs> I say this because we know what it was without technology, right? Yeah. And so we we knew what it was. Hey, when when it wasn't no technology, or or it, it wasn't technology where it is. And then we know how to live in a world full of technology. Mm -hmm. And so I think that man, what kids and what young adults now, like especially the ones I teach in college, man, it's something you can do right now that you could leverage and monetize. Yeah. And, and it's like you said, man, finding out what is it that I'm already doing um, mm -hmm. that I like. That I can, you know, turn into a career, man. And and uh, man. And so, speaking of that, man, like you went through so much adversity in college, and uh, from from you know programs dropping, just things out of your control, man, and and transferring, which which is part of transition, which is difficult. Uh, one of the you know the most difficult things in life to do is continue to transition from different things, and especially mm -hmm. when you get comfortable. But what what would you say, man, just throughout your college? Uh, time in college, man, at, at those three different um, universities, three, three different schools. Like, what was the greatest lesson, man, um, that you learned? Like, what did college uh, teach you about life, man? Yeah, I mean, one, I think the biggest thing is, and, and you mentioned now, like, a lot of kids are, are transferring to school because they're not getting playtime, right? You know, yeah, like, yeah, kids yeah. are, like, going to different, like, now they're going to, like, four or five schools now just because they want to play. Uh, yeah. And being in college for like eight years, I'm not sure. How, you know, I was like, after a while, I was like, nah, I gotta graduate. Hey, I'm like, bro, I'm 21. Time. I was 21 <laughs> when I was going. These boys, and, and, and you know, do what you do, right? But I'm yeah. like, man, yeah. I was playing professionally. I'm out of school at 23, 24. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. not playing against 18, 19 year old. But go ahead, man. My bad. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. And um, and I think one of the things that I think college taught me during the time, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna build long life lasting relationships. I have a lot of my friends that you know, dear friends to me to this day. They're basically family. I mean, you've been family for me forever, um, you know, and it's one of those things that you see, you know, program dropping, you got to, you know, like you said, got to constantly transition, constantly transition. You're like, dang, man, like, am I just having bad luck? Like, what's going on? And I think what it did, was it taught me uh, humility and also taught me perseverance. Um, because after a period of time, like, you know, you feel like, all right, I'm here, I'm in a good place, you know, like, 
I'm doing my thing, and then like you get rocked, right? And then once you get rocked, like how are you going to persevere? How are you going to go to that next chapter? You know, that next step. And you know, it's very interesting because even at pace, you know, I, I dealt with some you know adversity, you know, towards the end as well. I mean, I broke my leg. And my, my yeah, first like that, injury. Yeah, I remember, I remember you, had, you had an injury in, in, in uh, high yeah, school. school yeah, you know, and, and like when I broke my leg, I was like, man, like what's going on, man? Like is this God telling me that like I'm washed? You know, like I was yeah, like, all right, that's yeah. cool if that's the case. Um, but, you know, going through that and then coming back into a graduate year and then, like, experiencing one of my teammates being killed, you know, and, like, seeing that experience, you know, firsthand, you know, and it was just like, man, like, like, what is it that I ultimately need to be able to take from this experience, you know? Like, I used to pray and ask God. I mean, I still pray. But during the time I was praying, I was like, hey, God, show me a sign. Like, what is it that I ultimately do? And yeah. I think one of the things that actually helped me out was that having that foundation, you know, communications what we talked about. Um, and, and realizing that, you know, there's an opportunity for me to be able to help tell a story or, or paint a vision. You know, I experienced all these hardships. I mean, even when we were younger, you know, with things with my parents d- divorce and then taking all these, uh, these things that's happened and turning them into uh, positives uh, yeah. over a period of time, it was just like, all right, this is what my mission is. This is what my purpose is. You know, like, you know, God was re- realigning me every time something happened. I was like, this is a chance for me to realign. Um, and I took that as an opportunity for me to continue to, you know, better myself and like, okay, maybe in this particular, uh, place that I'm in right now, like maybe I need to change something. I need to shift something. I need to shift my energy to, mm-hmm. to be able to, uh, appease, you know, what the man above wants us to do. And, yeah. and I think that, you know, at pace and going through the experiences that I went through there, you know, and then like how that's have catapulted me to where I am today in my personal life and professional life, you know, I think has been, uh, significant, you know, and, yeah. and, and it's definitely taught me not to take anything for, for granted. Um, yeah. And that perseverance is always going to be, you know, something that's going to be uh, necessary. Man, um, you know, just obviously I wasn't there, you know, alongside, but but mm-hmm. definitely remember, you know, conversations that we had, um, you broke your leg and, you know, mm-hmm. um, like you said, the you know, what, what happened uh, with your, you know, the, that night, man, with, with witnessing what happened with your teammate and, uh, you know, one thing I can say to you, dog, is is you definitely persevered. Like, you know what I mean. And and uh, I know it wasn't easy. Um, I, I know that it was it was tough times, but you never gave up, right? And, yeah. and, and and you never soured on life either. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know, some people you go through different things, and you can like sour on life to where you like, man, forget life, or you walk around with bad energy. But but bro, you always smiling. Um, yeah, yeah. man, one of the most supportive friends I got, you know, flying out to AZ, uh, man, having good times with me. And when we, I was talk, just talking to my coworker, I'm like, yeah, man, my boy came from New York over there when we played Philly. Uh, man, so yeah. I appreciate, you know, all the love. And, and, and like I say, man, things that, that I can learn from your story is just, you know, when, when you get lemons in life, made lemonade, man. And, yeah. and, and with, a, yeah. with a smile, though, with a smile. No, so yeah. Oh yeah, say what you yeah. No, no, I was gonna say. I mean, it's the same thing with, with your situation as well. I mean, I remember when you broke your leg in, in uh, high school. Yeah. Uh, I think I missed that game. Uh, it was a baseball game. I missed yeah, that game missed because of yeah. uh, my uh, my um, uncle's funeral. And then I remember hearing like, "Man, Jordan broke his leg." I was like, "Man, what?" It's like, yeah. like that hurt me because you know, like, like, man, I was. I tell everybody all the time, like, you're probably one of the most talented dudes that I ever played with, met. You know, and, and I, I remember that hurt me. I was like, dang, man. I remember, like, you were one of the first people I reached out to because we lived not too far from each other. And I remember, I, like, you know, just like, I didn't check in, make sure you're all right, make sure you're good. Um, and you first came back, and I was like, all right, you know, like, this is this my brother, man. Like, you know, we play together. I'm like, I'm going to make sure he's good, make sure he's straight. And and even, you know, the things that you were going through when you were uh, trying out for NFL, and I remember, like, you used to get down, I'm like, nah, bro, like, you know, you got it. Like, you're going to make it. You know, like, you're good. And, like, I mean, you're a Arena Bowl champion, like, multi-time Arena Bowl champion, you know? And, like, I took pride in going to see you play, you know, and, and see you do your thing. And, and all the time, I was like, man, this dude is the real deal, you know what I mean? And, uh, and like, watching you and seeing what you persevered and even what you're doing, you know, in life, you know, it, it's always been a blessing, man. You've always been one of the true friends, you know, and, and yeah. also brother in Christ, you know? Like, I, I knew no matter That's what, my heart. He gonna pray for me. He gonna make sure we're good. I'm gonna pray for him. We're gonna be good. And uh, and, and I think that's that also helped our bond. You know, since yeah. we were younger, it's like all right. You know, we had the faith that was always a yeah. part of what, the, the whole thing. And we always gonna like faith, family, football, right? Yeah, but for all sure. those things have been true um, from the beginning. No, for sure, man. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. And uh, and uh, and so when, when we transition and think about like what you're doing right now, right? And so mm-hmm. when we talk about we tackle the topic behind the scenes. 
right? Mm-hmm. And, and we know that we grew up in media or, or we're pursuing careers in media. We were in front of the camera. Uh, but what, like, what made you, man? Because especially like, you know, we live in this world, especially like young adults that I'm targeting. We want to be out in front. Right. We yeah. want to be out in front. We want to be the person in front of the podcast. Right. We want to we want to be the, the, the person on stage. We want to be the person singing and singing the songs. And I heard Wallow say this, man. He was like, most people miss out on opportunities because they want to be in the front, not realizing that those in the background a lot of times make more money than the people in the front. Or your career yeah. is more is more longevity than the ones in the front. And so what made you decide to, to get behind the scenes, man, behind the camera and do what you do, man? Yeah, I mean, it actually started in high school, you know, when yeah. doing so many, we did some like PSAs, like all these like, you know, student films and student yeah. projects. And, and uh, I remember doing that then. It was like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting, you know, and, and I took a liking to editing and, and being a storyteller there, you know, because you, know, you can storytell in different ways, right? You know, whether you're having a camera and you're visually taking people through experience or the way you edit and you take people through experience. Mm-hmm. And over a period of time, I remember like starting that and I was like, all right, you know, this is something I may be interested in doing down the road. Um, and then in college, like I was taking more like PR and things like that. I was like, oh, that ain't really what I want to do. I really want to stay yeah. on the creative side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've always been pretty creative and technical, you know. And so being able to marry those two things into experience was something that I thought was going to be prove to be uh they, they give me a little bit more longevity in my career um and then you know being in front of the camera there's a lot of like things that's like you know you have ageism you have to deal with you know you got to deal mm. with there's a lot of layers to being yeah. a person in front of the camera yeah. um and you know you have to be likable right ultimately you have yeah. to be likable i think i'm pretty likable but you know it's up to someone who's casting or who's hiring for those roles to put you there um, and so I remember when I first started and I was like trying a few things out and after a while I was like, you know what, I like being behind the scenes because I have a lot of opportunities here from behind the scenes and, and, you know, I actually took a route into corporate production, um, yeah. and working for companies, working internal and producing, you know, original content that way. And then, you know, working and doing a lot of event production. Um, and so doing that, it was one of those things where I was like, oh, being behind the scenes, yeah, you can be direct. And you start realizing, like, the people that, then you start learning more about directors, right? You know, yeah. like the Spike Lees of the world and, and everyone that really, like, is behind the scenes is making things happen. And uh-huh. I was like, oh, this is it, you know, like being yeah. a producer, director, like, that's ultimately what the career is because I can do this for a long period of time. You know, if you're in front of the camera, after a while, they're going to want someone younger to be in front of the camera, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. so you guys start thinking about that. And it's like, all right, how do I extend my career, but start my career in a place where I can have a long career, you know, in the, in the industry? And that's how I landed on it. Man, that's that's powerful, man, because, you know, you thinking about a lot of times we, we, we think about right now. Right. And we don't mm-hmm. consider down the road. And so we talk about age is, is real thing. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and then even like we think about music, um, I just heard hear people like man, some of the most most uh, grossing people in the industry are people that write. Right. Uh, or, or, you know, we hear their songs. They they have a little, you know, not a little, but because it's still a blessing. They have a moment in the in the sun. But then they fall back, but they still write it. And you're like, yeah. man, I didn't know so and so wrote that song, and I didn't know. And it, and it's, and to your point, it, it's so um, dope. But it goes against what social media and, and the world um, says. So, like, what advice would you give to a young adult? They they on the verge of kind of trying to make a decision, man. Should I do in front of the camera? Should I do behind the camera? Can I do both? Um, you know, uh, I like, you know, I, I like the attention of being in front. Um, like, but, but like, what advice could you give someone that, that or would you give the younger, a person that's kind of in that decision, trying to make that decision, man? Yeah, I think, I think it's a very, very valid question. Very thing, you know, for someone to ask themselves, right. You know, you see creators like Issa Rae and, uh, you know, Donald Glover who are both in front of camera and behind the scenes, right. Yeah. And writing and producing and directing, um, and you look at opportunities to, you know, like you have the Woody Allen's of the world, you know, shouldn't use him as a reference, but you have those people who've been there and that's been doing their thing for a period of time where it's not going to be the first time someone does this, right? Where they yeah. are in front of the camera and they're like, hey, I have more of an interest in being behind the scenes. Um, and so after a while, once you start that process and you see that and, you know, you see like, hey, when you look at the credits at the end of a show, who's the, who's the writer, who's the director, who's the producer? Mm-hmm. And you see these same people who are in front of cameras, it's like, oh, I could do both that I'm better suited for. Like, do I have the personality to really captivate someone over a period of time? Or am I someone behind the scenes that like to get stuff done, right? You know, because you need those kind of people that get stuff done, who can, you know, think, you know, steps ahead versus like being in in the immediate 
Um, and that's ultimately what helps someone determine like what path best suits them. But also it's a personality thing, honestly. You know, it's really like what suits your personality. Not everyone is meant to be in front of the camera. Yeah, um, yeah. And so uh, for me, it was, for, I, I like the ability to have, you know, flexibility in, in what I do. Um, I remember, you know, reading about some uh, news anchors and television anchors that would say like they'll be out in public and like they can't even enjoy dinner with their family because mm. people are coming up to them, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And I thought about that. I was like, look, I like my privacy, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm an extrovert person. I like to have fun. But, like, hey, when it's my family time, it's my family time. When it's my yeah, time, yeah. it's my time. You know, I don't want to have anyone interrupting that. And so I was always very conscious of that, and that's what helped me. And so ultimately for an individual who chooses what career path or what side of the of the uh, camera they want to be on, you got to think about that and take that into consideration as well. Yeah. And the crazy thing is that you said, just as I'm asking you, well, like, as you were talking before, then I'm asking you, I'm like, dang, that, that. I started thinking about that. Like, yeah. I could be a producer, um, have mm -hmm. a good career, take care of my family, and nobody knows. I could walk yeah. in a room, nobody knows my life is normal. But you still are, are making the money and doing things, providing for your family the way that you want, going on amazing trips. Uh, but mm -hmm. you're still getting that privacy as a person that may not be um, doing what you're doing, right? Um, yeah. Opposed to, like you say, man, just just hearing the lifestyle. And, and I just encourage, you know, anybody, man, especially my young adults, like, when you're looking at different people, man, like, learn about their stories or watch yeah. their, interview, in the, their interviews, and they'll tell you that what you think that life is, is, like, may not be all what it's cracked up to be. It's a lot of work. That, yeah, and, and then even if you still want that life, right, um, just knowing what to be prepared for, right, you know, mm -hmm. to set those boundaries and everything, man. And, and so um, and so when we talk about behind the scenes, obviously your career, um, and, and as we was talking, when you was asking me, like, what, you know, what are we talking about? And I thought about, like, behind the scenes is not just what your job, right? Um, your husband, your father, and um, got a successful wife doing amazing in her career. So, like, you, you know, I know they're in, in a marriage, in a relationship, right? There are times when, hey, you're out in the front. You're winning, yeah. right? Not in the say, like, oh, who's, it's a competition. But I'm saying, like, mm -hmm. you're in the front, Sarah's supporting you from behind. And then mm -hmm. now Sarah's out in the front, and now you're behind the scenes supporting. So, like, why is that important to do? Like, as a, as a husband, as a spouse, as a significant other, why is that important to make sure when you're behind the scenes that you support your significant other in, or spouse in a way that, that, Hey, you're you're supporting them, and they're out there winning at what they do. Uh, I mean, what, what's the acronym of team? You know, together each accomplishes more, right? And so okay. when you think about that aspect of it, it, it's 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 true in all facets of your life. You know, whether it's professionally or your personal life, and your marriage and your relationships. Um, the, one of the things I think that's very interesting when I when I met my wife, and you know, we call each other's partners, right? You know, we're life partners at this point. You know, and yeah, sure. uh, when, we, when I first met her and we were talking. Uh, I remember she was first told me, she was like, it's never going to be 50-50 in a relationship, right? You know, I think that's the thing, like, a lot of people always fail to understand. It's like, it's never 50-50. It's never going to be split down the middle. It's, there's going to be some times when this person's going to be 80 and another person's going to be 20, and then vice versa, right? And so yeah. I remember I was having that conversation early, and it took me to mature a little bit more and understand, like, what she meant by that, right? Yeah. And she could, probably could just heard that from somewhere else and just regurgitated it to me or something hey, like that. Hey, but, hey, hey, they say, when that, hey, my coach told me this, if you ever forget where you got some it becomes yours. Hey. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so, like, I remember uh, in the beginning of my, you know, when I first met her, we both were yeah. at a similar place in life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she was doing her thing, I was doing my thing, and, 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 like, different paths of leadership. And, you know, it was something that we took from each other. But there's different things that we learned from each other, right? You know, mm -hmm. and she's doing her thing, right? Um, and there's times when, you know, she'll ask me uh, a question about something and say, Hey, you know, I'm working with these types of people. Like, what are your thoughts on this? And like, yeah, I'll yeah. give her some opinions and advice on that. Or like, I'm preparing for an opportunity. She's like, all right, you should probably approach it this way, you know, or if they ask you this, prepare this way. Um, it's very interesting. We talk about preparation, you know, and like, she's someone that prepares. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, being an athlete, you know, our whole career, I mean, our whole life, uh, you learn about preparation. You're constantly preparing, constantly preparing. And so I took that as something for me as well. It's like, you know what? I can translate everything I do, I did in sports into what I'm doing in my professional life, into what I'm doing in my, in my uh, personal life. And not all the time you're going to win, right? You know, there's going to be times where you're going to be like, uh, all right, whatever. You know, and, you know, sometimes there's the sacrifices you have to make, you know, 
uh, especially in parenting as well yeah. um, and being, you know, where we are in our careers, you know, in, in leadership levels. Um, and, it, you know, there's sacrifices that come with that, you know, sometimes sure. it's like, all right, we got to dedicate time. And I remember another day she was like, put it on my calendar if you want me to do so. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you talking to? Got to put out a calendar. Hey. <laughs> and, you know, she, she was right to some degree on that. I was yeah, like, yeah, all right, yeah, whatever, yeah. man. Like, because yeah. there are things, I can remember things. Like someone says something to me and I'm like, okay, I can, I can remember it. You know, like that's just the way yeah. I am. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily need to be reminded on a lot of things because if it's something that's important, I remember it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, you know, there's times when, you know, she's doing a thing and I'm like, listen, you got to go ahead, you know, and, and I, like she was going for her opportunity. I said, go for it. Like if mm-hmm. at, the, at the end of the day, like if you don't get it, you don't get it, you know, but yeah, yeah. you go for it because it's something you want to do. I want you to go and max out how long you want to max out. Um, because she also, you know, as a woman, you got to deal with the different things in industry mm-hmm. in terms of like sexism um, sure. and how that and how that plays, you know, long term. So mm-hmm. and ageism as well at some point. Right. Yeah. And so. I'm always supportive of that, you know, just like same thing with Brittany, you know, she's doing her thing as a creator, as she's doing things, you know, in terms of uh, design and, and experiences that she's creating yeah. and, and like seeing you be a part of that, you know, I think it's, it's definitely been a joy from the side as well as like, you know what, that's what we got to do. Sometimes as a husband, you got to be supportive, right? You know, what yeah, we know sure. and, and, and biblically, you know, they always like the man is the head, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. the man is the head, but you can still support the wife, yeah. you know, you still support sure. your partner. So. I think sometimes like a lot of people, you know, miss that opportunity. Um, and, you know, it's being behind the scenes doesn't necessarily mean like either be on my chest and say, I'm the man, you know, yeah. like it's known, right? You know, yeah. and, and you can be a quiet leader, uh, you know, and I, I've learned that from uh, a few of my, my, uh, my, my grandfather, actually. He yeah. doesn't really say as many words, but you know what he means. You know, you know so what he means, cool. yeah. And, and speaking of getting that from family, uh, Sarah yeah. said she actually got that from her mom. Hey, she's, yeah. she wrote in the uh, chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. She got, she got it. So you got to thank your mother in law for that, though, man. But, yeah. but um, just like, I mean, like what you just said, man, what I think a lot of times just as men, because um, we get in this macho, right? And, and, and you know, I'm I'm the man, I'm the, I'm the head of the household, I'm the head of the family, right? Biblically, mm-hmm. yes, you are. Um, however, man, um, there's a book called Kingdom Man written by Tony Evans, and, he's, and he talked about a lion. And he said that a lion doesn't walk around roaring all day long, that he only yeah. walks only on the roar for specific reasons. When he's mating, yeah. he's hungry, he's protecting his territory, um, or he's, you know, protecting his pride. So he doesn't just walk around saying, I'm a lion, I'm a lion, I'm the king of the jungle. Nah, mm-hmm. it's just only specific times. And so I believe that as men, yeah, there may be time where you have to literally stand in the front and be that spear or be that shield for the family where you in the front. But then there may be mm-hmm. times where, hey, I'm in the back. This is my role, right? And, 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 you know, I'm supporting. I'm doing this. And when I think about Brittany, how when I was playing, she in New Orleans, she coming to yeah. Arizona. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, sisters everywhere. Like, with hey, I was like, hey, all right. Fly, flying and all. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all both came out there for my birthday. So mm-hmm. when I think about that and I watch how she stood on the sidelines celebrating me, rooting for me. And I and I tell her, man, when when, when we be on trips and we go on places be on, on her, like because of her career, because of her as an amazing blogger, content creator, I'm like, mm-hmm. look, man, I'm I'm happy. Like, I'm happy to support you and see you winning because this is mm-hmm. I'm just returning a favor. Like this is yeah. you. You did it with no complaint. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You 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 did it with no complaint. And even like now, things that I do when it takes her away from the kids, you know how it is. Right, mm-hmm. you might have a long night, Sarah, at home. Gotta take care of mine, right? And then, yeah. and then, vice versa. You like, all right, Sarah, go do your thing, pursuing this. I got it now. You know, with us, we, hey, when we got the hey. solo night, hey, it get a little ugly in there with the solo <laughs> night. Hey, ain't even hey. gonna lie. Hey, bro, it get a little ugly, man. Talk about that, bro. Just like being that father, bro. Like, you know, what I'm saying? yeah. Like, how's that? I'll say being a father is probably the greatest joy of my life, man. Like, I think that's what ultimately, you know, I say my purpose is to tell stories. I think my yeah. stories and the stories that I tell is going to be for my son to be able to experience, mm. right? And so, yeah. uh, like, seeing him and, like, the experiences of being with him, I mean, from day one, it was just like, bro, this is my this is my dude, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, even yeah. now, like, uh, every night, you know, I do the bath routines except for tonight, but I do the bath yeah. routines, so that's my opportunity to do the bonding and, you know, what am I teaching him? Like, what are some of the things that he's going to learn, you know, and like, how do I make him a better version of me, right? You know, ultimately, yes. we want our kids to be a better version yeah. of ourselves. And yeah. so whenever I'm, I'm talking with him and like, you know, experiencing things and like, he'll say some things, everybody's like, what is he saying? I'm like, I know what he's saying. He's saying this, you know, because yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm used to, yeah, yeah, exactly. We have that bond where it's like, I can just translate things and I can uh, like experience things that he's, you know, going for or things that he's doing. 
And I think that, you know, if anyone ever gets a chance to experience being a parent, you know, like there are the days that, like you said, where it's just like, man, this dude stressing me out. Like, you know, right. especially in the early days, you know, yeah, I, yeah. Talk, I was talking to my, a couple of my boys about it earlier. I said, hey, man, like when, uh, the, when you know, you're in those early days when the kids are like crying, you know, and you're trying to like do all this stuff and, and they're just not having it, yeah. man. Hey, that thing, it'll, 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 it'll make you really question, you know, oh, things in your marriage, you, yourself, uh, you're like, hey, who am I? Hey, <laughs> Man, I just remember them times like uh, it ain't a lot, right? I'm I'm a I'm a day shift person. I ain't even gonna lie, so I ain't gonna sit up here and have, like I'm just this um night shift person, Brittany night shift, A one, right? And but I know that there are times when she like, AJ, hey, look, I'm just super tired, I ain't got it tonight. And I just uh remember those times, bro, when I'm like, bro, I'm getting upset, like just go to sleep, like go to sleep. You know, they don't wanna go to sleep, bro. And, and, and you know uh, the funny thing is, and that is so funny because like I'm the opposite with with, uh, with my wife. Like okay. whenever it's sleep time, like I can get him yeah. down. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where yeah, I'm yeah. like, all right, I'm gonna get him down. And, and for her, you know, his, she, when he sees her, it's like playtime. You know, with me, it's like, all right, daddy means business. It's time to go down, or it's time to do something. You know what I'm saying? And so I think he takes me a little more seriously when it comes down to the bad time. And I, and I don't care. You know, he'll fight, do all those things, say I'm gonna stay. Yeah, stay the course, oh, yeah, stay level, time. you know, yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. I learned a lot of that from just being in, in live production space, right, you know, where things can go wrong and composure is going to be the most important thing. You got to be able to stay composed. You got to be able to yeah. handle it and, and stay even killed because you can't let anyone else see you sweat, right? So you got to continue to do your thing, not let anyone see you sweat and like have that level of confidence so that way that person trusts you. And the same thing with your kid, like, you know, if you are, if you appear calm, then they're going to calm down eventually, mm -hmm. right? Their frequency yeah, lowers. Yeah. And so I always translate those two things together where a lot of people may think like, oh man, like, you know, you, you can handle this pretty well. I'm like, hey, you got lower the frequency, man. You lower yeah. this frequency, you know, everybody's going to be all right. And then he goes down. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, real. that's my boy, man. Now, hey, for real, man, I can see the smile. Like, that's what, that's what, man. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. it's real, bro. It's real, man. You know, and I, you know, I know we ain't really get into it more, but you, I know you hinted like you raised by your mom, man. And we mm -hmm. both, even though, you know what I'm saying, I was raised by my, my, my stepdad, but that's my dad, mm -hmm. right? But we both, as far as biological, um, mm -hmm. had that absence. And um, mm -hmm. and I, I can only imagine, I know we had so many conversations offline, man, through the years of just why you, why, how that motivates us to be the yeah. best father, right? That we can yeah. be because of that absence of our biological fathers man and, and so man um with that man i, I definitely want to you know transition to this last part man respect your time man and mm -hmm. and um uh, so what's like what's next for you man in career a business life like personal life what's next for you man it's it's funny because i was talking to a couple of graduate students uh, the other night and i was telling them sort of what my my, my plan is and what's my you know joy and yeah uh also i want to stay in the corporate space for the next you know 10 years so um mm -hmm. then i mean I've, I've always wanted to do this sports anthropology documentary uh i've always said like my dream job was like work doing like hbo sports and just doing like a like a series of like videos and that'd be it um yeah. so i want to do that for maybe about you know three or four years right and yeah. then i think i want to transition into uh, education and coaching because i do believe that like we have a responsibility for the next generation i mean mm -hmm. our kids are, are are living breathing examples of that right you know yeah, like sure. how we raise them and, and the impact they're going to have on the world um so i ultimately believe that that's my long-term play right you know like hey i'm gonna do corporate you know production go as high as i can in this space and then like in maybe in another 10 years i'll tap out and be fine wherever i whatever i achieve um and i think that's one of the things that i take and hope you know as my three five to ten year plan mm -hmm. um currently you know being at one of the, the biggest uh you know cryptocurrency tech companies in the world yeah. Um, where, you know, you experience some of the highs and lows, you know, as the, uh, the market's going high and low. Yeah. Um, and then you realize like, Hey, you know what? This ain't forever. You know what I mean? So what enjoyment do I have? I enjoy what I do. I really enjoy what I do, you know, being yeah. creative and, and working with people to help execute visions. Um, but I want to do something that, where I'm giving back, you know, and the sports anthropology piece is something, you know, there's a book I read years ago, uh, called the sports gene, um, phenomenal book. And, uh, I remember when I read that book, and it was one of the things that we always ask, you know, you always hear, like, is this person born this way or did they develop this way, right? So you look at like, LeBron yeah. James, you look at these guys, yeah. um, you wonder, are they born that way or did they develop into this thing? And I think at some point we, we actually take that into, like, a scientific approach and look at, you know, Nick was talking about some of the things, you know, in terms of cognitive yeah. development and mental exercises. 
um, and be able to take those things and be able to apply it, right? And understand like, all right, how do we get these phenoms that we have, or how do we get these, uh, you know, areas of, of the world where you know they're producing this type of talent, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it would be able to be my full circle moment of going back into the sports world and also bringing the production space into yeah. sports. Um, and then after that, I think I want to transition into you know. Uh, I think about our high school coaches and the things that they did for us. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Coach Martin, when he used to like pick us up, and drop us off. <laughs> Hot um, 105. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were on Hot 105 every day, man. <laughs> uh, but just think about those experiences as well, yeah. like being able to be, he had kids, he had boys and stuff like that, but he was also, you know, a service to us and making yeah. really took us and looked out yeah. to look after us. So uh, I definitely want to pay it for it, you know, and, and I think uh, also if I might do that for, you know, uh, you know, 10, 15, you know, 20 years and, and get back and, you know, probably get into coaching. I mean, we talk about coaching, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I love that. Like, I love the game. I love football yeah. so much, but like, do I, you know, do I want to coach long term? I don't know. It depends on yeah. if I want to be stressed out, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. every night. Yeah. Now, and it's crazy, man. Um, and, and I love your, I love one thing I want young adults, man, those that's watching this, that's watching this on live and you know, listen to it on replay, man, is listen to my boy Daniel playing. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't thought about this, bro. You didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the, the 15, 10 year, you know what I mean? And, and just locked in, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And and you're going to move forward um, and take actionable steps to get there, mm -hmm. man. And, and that's what, you know, we got to do. We got to have a vision. We got to think long term, man, where there is no vision. Yeah. Um, the people perish, man. And, and so the fact that you got a vision, man, um, you know, it just lets you know, like, where you're going, man, and where you're heading. Yeah. And you're going to get there and do more. Yeah, and, and, and just in, in the space that I'm in, you know, this thing about, like, constantly, you have to always be a step ahead, right? So, especially in a lot of production space, yeah. um, you have to always be a step ahead of what's happening, right? You know, and, and anticipate, be anticipatory, mm -hmm. you know? And that was yeah. one of the, the catchphrases or the key lines uh, at my previous job where anticipatory services, you know? And so you got to be anticipating what can happen, you know, and, and mm -hmm. think five steps ahead. Um, yeah. And a lot of people are saying, like, oh, man, like, you just got to, you can respond and stuff like that. Yeah, because I, I already saw, like, remember before games, it's like, you got to envision the play. You got to envision yeah. these things. And yeah. I'm already thinking what can happen and, like, or how would I respond? Um, and so, like, that's no different in my career, you know, where every time I'm always looking at, okay, this is my next couple of steps. And if something derails me from that step, all right, this would be the way I get back to there, right? You know, you yeah. get sidetracked by different things. How do you get back on course? You know, stay in the course and persevering um, is ultimately the end goal, right? You got to persevere through all these things. Mm -hmm. And so, like, understanding, you know, what is it that my long term play and um, and how do I get there is going to be the most important uh, thing. Yeah. I've got you see, you see, uh, <laughs> and, and, um, and, and to see, like, how that, you know, transpires over a long period of time. No, nah, most definitely, man. And, and, man, just great comments. Uh, I know, um, man, they compliment you, man, saying that you're a great dad. Uh, and then, you know, Sarah coming on there saying, yes, he is. She <laughs> said her frequency is high. Um, yeah. I'm uh, the one that's that, that keeps it low. Yeah, and, and hey, smooth. you know what I'm saying? We got we, we to gotta balance each other out, man. And, um, yeah. and uh, Amos said de he definitely think, man, I feel like the absence of a father should make more men go harder instead of using it as an excuse. Right? I totally agree. Amos, you're right, bro. Yeah. Hey, for real. And he said Coach Martin super turned, man. He said you ain't losing them high high level F cat words. <laughs> hey, um, hey man, but yeah, man, I ain't gonna hold you up, man. I what I do, man, I allow you've been on the show. You, I mean, watch the show, man. Now you on the show, mm -hmm. but I but I allow my guests, man, every episode that I have with a guest, I do all the ask ask another questions and then at the end I allow you to ask one question. Um, that you want to ask me, um, it could be about this, it could be about whatever, man. Um, but yeah, man, just just opening the flow up to you, man, to where you can put your producer hat on, your your interviewer uh, hat on, and, uh, and to ask me a question. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you talk, you ask me what's next, you know, and, yeah. and I think for the viewers, what's next for you? I mean, you uh -huh. are you do motivational speaking, you know, you are pursuing broadcasting. I mean, you, if people tune in to ESPN three from time to time, they're going to hear you. Um, and you know, this is something that you're doing, but what's ultimately your, your long term play here? Your long term my, goals? My long term play. We go, man. We go short term, meaning like three to five years, and long term yeah. beyond that. Okay, so um, three to five years is to um, be out outside of the class, like walk away from teaching, uh, but go back in the schools under win. 
right, um, to where I'm bringing wind into the schools, whether it's a, a business to consumer, uh, me going in directly with the kids, I'm face to face, or whether it's a business to business, shout out to Nick putting me on these terms, business to business, where um, where I am going in and I'm teaching teachers and faculty um, my program. For them, for them to go and implement, right? So that's three to five, uh, and then uh, also to um, along with that. So that'll be stuff that I do like on every day, kind of thing, three days out of the week, ideally. Uh, and then mm-hmm. also like towards the end of the week or the weekends, travel and speak, um, grow that 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 part of me, uh, that part of win the keynote speaking element. And then mm-hmm. man, um, call us a, call us a big time um, college football, NFL football for a network. Um, that that right up, those three things right there, uh, and, and ultimately um, by that time you want to be speaking and calling games. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and use the both of the the notoriety, the attention, the platform from calling mm-hmm. big college games to leverage that like a Nick Saban go in and get the bag in the off season. Yeah, when he done, okay, get the bag, you know, man. He get he get the bag during yeah. season. Then he go get the <laughs> bag for 45 minutes to an hour. You know, so. Those mm-hmm. two things, man. If I do those, when I do those two things, man, um, yeah, exactly. that, when, you know that when. level. Um, and then that in in that though, like we talk about coaching, um, coaching. I can see myself getting back. I coach now, but but mm-hmm. but uh, and I coach my son and and, and man, hey, but well, you start coaching Lily, bro. You hey, you think you gonna be just this? Ah, uh, you know, I'm calm. Man, after the first game I came home, I told Brittany, I was embarrassed, bro. It's a transparent moment, y'all. I told yeah. Brittany, man, I got out coached. Hey, <laughs> hey, they four years old, bro. Hey, you know I took that to heart, bro. I said, hold yeah, on, yeah. I can get out coached in soccer, but I can't get I can't get out coached in football, flag football. You know they don't know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? But right. but you know what I'm saying? But that that's how I felt, bro. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, getting into coaching, man, always giving back and pouring into people, man. And, and, and so that that's my that's my three to five. Uh, 10 to 15, man, your plan, man, is, is walking away from teaching but staying in the schools with my program, my business, um, picking it up with the uh, keynote speaking, and then working for a network, man, uh, call it big time football, NFL, college. Uh, but, but yeah, man, that's that's what that's what I'm working towards. I'm striving towards and persevering and, and building connections, like you said, and, uh, you know, just doing that, man, grinding. Um, yeah, and, you know, and the thing is, like, uh, like again, our relationship – it's gone almost 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I met you at uh, I think I met you at 14, 14 when I met you, bro. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. I mean hey. Hey. yeah. Flying, hey. man. And it's like thinking about that and just thinking about like the way that we've been, you know, support system for each other over time, you know, yeah. different experiences that like, yeah. you know, being a uh, co best man at your wedding and you know, yeah. going to different states the bits that you play, you know, when you're playing in the arena. Um, even now, like the way that, you know, I pick up the phone and give you a call and whenever, you know, dealing with different things and like, Hey, yeah. you know, we're going through some stuff, you know, give me a, uh, if you pray for me. Um, and it's all, one of the things I always appreciate, man. Like, that's why when you say, Hey, you know, when you jump on a show, it's like a show, you know, yeah. it's not even a question, you know, just tell yeah. me when and I'm gonna be there, you know? And so, uh, it's always a blessing to be able to, you know, chop it up with you, man. But it's also one of those things that, you know, I'm really proud of the things that you're doing right now, you know, your, your weekly uh, <laughs> podcast. Um, I do believe that you're going to get to that next step as well. You know, a lot of it is like putting in the work, like we talked about, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting in the work, and I'm constantly putting in the work, uh, learning how to be better at what I do. You know, because if I can get to a certain place and I can put other people on, you know, and, and that's ultimately what I, I really strive for. To be honest, you know, if I can yeah. put on at least ten to fifteen people, like almost like the coaching tree that you see in like NFL, yeah, yeah, college, for sure. Yeah. Um, you get people up, you get other people on, and that means you did your job, right? Yeah. And so that's ultimately the goal. Um, big picture goal is to do that. But then, you know, when I laid out my plan, that's my plan. I'm going to try to stick to it. If there's yeah. something that may, you know, pull me in a direction where I want to still create um, and start telling, I'll, I'll, you know, look at alternatives and how I can be able to do that. But um, I definitely appreciate you having me on the show, man. And, uh, you know, can't wait to see you during Christmas. Hey, man, same here, man. And, and you just said something, man. Um, why? You know, if people look at my podcast and just uh, just through the, you know, the three years, first three years of doing it, and you look at the people I had on, nine times out of ten, I knew knew all my guests, right? Uh, and, it, and that was intentional because I, I heard Issa Rae say this. Um, she said that, you know, most people talk about, you know, leveling up, like level up, you got to level up. And she said, well, how about you level up around you? 
and you use all the amazing people you have around you. And mm -hmm. and my path, like, bro, I've been blessed with so many dope people like you, right? Yeah. That that are doing amazing things in their career, amazing things in their field. And and why get a platform and not bring you on, right? You know what I'm saying? Or yeah, right, right. or or Nick or Amos got come like people that mm -hmm. are doing amazing that have things to give back. And and, and so that's that's my mindset because I believe I look at the people that I know and I'm like, bro, y'all going to the to the pinnacle of everything mm -hmm. y'all doing. You know what I'm saying? And and, and so I'm already connected to y'all. And I'm like, man, let me use the people that I know already, not use, but have the people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, y'all, y'all coming yeah. on, y'all blessing me. Like I learned so much from what you saying, how to look at it. Like you said, in front of the camera, ageism. So I got, I'm thinking like, okay, I, I need to learn some, also learn some behind the scene things, skills. Mm -hmm. If I want to continue in the media field as well. So I'm learning from you, learn from Nick. So y'all are blessing me. And, and, and I don't just bring people on just because I'm like, oh, I know them. I'm like, nah, they got substance. They got value. Yeah. That that Appreciate not only do me, um, I could benefit, but those that's listening could benefit, bro. And so, um, man, I appreciate it. And I, and, I, and, I, and you said this the message that you want to get, get, and you hit on the message. But I want to let you finish with this. So I want to let you finish by telling people where they could follow you, subscribe to um, um, you, and then I want you to end by talking about what you talked about, how you know when preparation meets opportunity. And, and how a lot of times, especially in this generation, especially like younger adults, we we like we look and say, oh, man, I want that. Oh, man, I should have that. But we don't think about the preparation, man. So end, end with that. Tell them where they can follow you, how they subscribe, what you, everything you got going on. And then end with, with that, man, that preparation meeting opportunity. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'll say the easiest way to follow me is is through this platform, you know, yeah. uh, at the Park 22. Um, also LinkedIn. I mean, listen, uh, we talk about our network, right, you know, and mm -hmm. how we can help each other, you know, be yeah. connected on LinkedIn, Daniel Parker. Um, but one of the things we talked about before the show, you know, and, and I remember I was reaching out to you, I was like, all right, you know, uh, let me know talking points because, you know, yeah. being behind the scenes and yeah, you know, yeah. producing, you know, <laughs> and, and then being in front of the camera is two different experiences, right? Yeah. Uh, and the thing that I, I really want to stress, you know, for anybody else that's watching and just like thinking through like what's the next step in their career or next step in their personal life, you know, um, is you got to always be preparing, you know, and, and 2020, I think, was a, a good wake up call for everybody. Uh, to figure out, like, hey, you know, am I really preparing the right way or how am I getting myself aligned? Um, and the funny thing was, going into 2020, I was getting alignment, right? You know, I was I was preparing for something. I remember I was, like, training, like, losing weight, um, reading more, really studying my craft. And a lot of that was because I was like, I need to prepare and prepare. And I was telling my wife at the time, I was like, I got to prepare this shit. was like, all right. I said, no, because the next best thing is coming. I need to prepare for what this next thing is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you always got to be preparing and never know when that opportunity may come. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you go through the practice of speaking, you know, in front of the camera. You can speak in front of your own camera, you know, it's to work on like your, like how you say things or you can work on like your, your mannerisms. Um, you know, your expressions are very important as well. You know, like whenever I'm directing someone, I always try to coach them on those things because if you're thinking about just having a conversation with your friend, you're not really thinking about how your finished face is. I used to always yeah. tell someone your finished face. You say a statement, you know, how, yeah, how do you I finish got, that, right? You know, that. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. whenever I'm like working with talent, I always make sure that like I'm guiding them in that direction. But, you know, if, if you're staying, if, like uh, Larissa said, you know, if you stay ready, you know, you don't have to get ready, right? You know, yeah. and, and that's the most important thing is you want to make sure you're always staying ready for opportunities. Um, whether personally and professionally, and you know when the opportunity comes, be ready to take advantage of it. Nah, for sure, man. And uh, man, I can't, I can't add nothing on to that, man. And um, definitely uh, amazing. Um, I, is this, you know, it say some alpha of men. You know, you know who that is. They say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my, that's my guy. Uh, yeah, that's my, my boy, Smiley. Um, okay. It's Michael. I know, uh, the person he said that Juno Prudon. I play with Juno. That's why. So yeah. I play with Juno. Uh, so that's a small world, bro. Yeah. Well, uh, he, he's from he's from from down the crib as well. Okay, then. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, because that's yeah. what Juno from. Uh, is he from Naples? Naples. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, then. Yeah. No. Yeah, they want like ran like the wing tea, cause you know. What I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hey, just, <laughs> yeah. Juno, hey, Juno was out there doing his thing though, bro. But uh, yeah. But yeah, man. Hey, I ain't gonna hold you up. I know what it is. I gotta get home to. Well, I'm already home, but I gotta get yeah. the uh, the wife and kids. Just like you know, I know you said uh, miles down. 
Um, so at eight, hey, that'd be the best time, man. So um, oh, yeah, absolutely, you get, man. get your family time in and in. And uh, hey, tell Sarah, tell the son, man. I said, hey, um, hey, I appreciate you, dog. Thank you so much, much love. I love you, dog. And uh, keep up the great work, man, with everything that you got going on. Um, and man, for everybody that tuned in, I appreciate you. Be sure to go subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jeremy Kellum. After this. Go and follow the podcast, Tackle Thursday with JK Podcast on Anchor, Spotify. Hey, be sure to support. We're here every Thursday with, um, by myself on um, with a guest. We're tackling a new topic, man. And so, man, y'all continue to wake up, strive to win on purpose, be intentional about winning, and y'all have a blessed day. All right? All right, dog. I know. All right. Take care, everyone.